with tax lending just coming to an end in the U.S. and going through my books, I noticed that the first two months of this year in 2023 have been pretty much amazing as far as bounties go. And what better way to celebrate other than making a video to talk about how I did it, what went wrong, what went okay, and kind of just talk about the bug bounty ecosystem to some extent. But before we jump into the video, I want to address something and say I'm not making this video to brag or kind of like pat myself on the shoulder and say good job, but I'm making this video more so to tell you guys that there is still a lot of money to be made by doing bug bounties if you put in the time and effort to do that. So with that said, you have to kind of want to put in the time and I'm going to talk about the time and effort thing in a bit and be willing to give up some of your fun or maybe give up some of your free time of video games or Reddit and YouTube to go and make this money, right? But we're going to jump into and talk about it. Before we do, you got to do me a favor. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, become a homie and turn on that bell notification so you get notified every Monday when I drop a new video. Okay, now let's jump into the video. You probably saw the title. You saw the thumbnail. Shocking. I'm doing a shock face and me saying that I'm at 100K. And I don't want to say that this is something normal for me. It is something that hasn't happened in a while. And it's probably one of my best runs with bug bounties. And it wasn't as easy as I make it sound to be. It was a lot of uh, time and effort put in and a lot of collaboration. And also, if I'm being honest, a big, large portion of it was because I was lucky. And I don't mean I was lucky because I found this like great program that paid me or because I found these vulnerabilities I'm lucky. It's just mostly I was there at the right time. And that means that I was on my laptop at the right time when this program on Buckrout, for example, sent out an announcement saying that they have added new things to their scope or just going back and hacking on this one private program on HackerOne that happened to pay me uh, a big portion and chunk of this 100K. So now that I've mentioned the two bug bounty platforms, I think we should talk about how it went down and how much I made on each one. Well, here's the Hacker One stats right here. You can see about 82,000 was from Hacker One from January 1st to end of February. And I wish I could do the same thing and put stats up here from Bug Crowd. They don't have that kind of dashboard as far as I can tell. But about 20K was uh, from Bug Crowd and it was all from a single program from each of these bug bounty platforms and luck happened because I was there at the right time and the right moment. So now that we know that I split my work into two bug bounty platforms, about 80% being on Hacker One and 20 being on Bug Crowd, and it goes back to what I've been saying in my previous videos that you need to find a primary bug bounty platform and a secondary and put in your efforts accordingly, whether you want to do 80, 20, 60, 40, and just make your money that way. So that was one of the ways that pushed me to make $100. But even though I could have still made a good amount of money with Hacker One, it wouldn't be as cool as saying 100K in two months if it wasn't for putting some effort into Bug Crowd and hacking on them. The second thing that I want to talk about is the program selection itself. These weren't new bug bounty programs that had just launched. One of them is a private program on Hacker One that I think has been out for, I want to say, four years. And the other one is a bug bounty program that I know a lot of top hackers like Jason Haddix and a couple of other ones have hacked on it because I've seen them tweet about this in their sheet. And I'm not saying that they're not good enough hackers, but I'm just trying to tell you that other good hackers have looked at these programs and it didn't mean that I want to give up and not look at it. So the point here is to tell you that just because other hackers have looked at it or if the bug bounty program has been around for years, you're not going to find any vulnerabilities. And this is a great example of it because just like I mentioned earlier, both of these programs have been running for years and I just happened to take a look at them at the right time. So now let's talk about the approach. How did I do this and what are some things that I learned and even though the upside is that I made this chunk of money, there were some downsides of putting all the effort, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So first of all, the approach was zero automation. I don't want to hear people saying, well, you have automation. You were using these tools. I promise you there was zero automation involved in this, no recon. And you can go back and watch my earlier video from this year when I said I made 10K. This 10K was a part of that. I made that 10K in a week as a part of this. And then later on, I realized I could make a better video with 100K. But there was zero recon. I talked about that approach in my last video. And I didn't use any tooling. There was no Nucle. There was no Subfinder. There was no Nmap. Nothing like that. It's just purely me sitting in Burb Suite, having my browser open, and then also having the network tab in my uh, browser open as well and looking at all the different things that happened in the DOM. If I wasn't doing any automation, 
what was the approach? What were the bugs that I found? Well, I wouldn't say a large number of them were authorization issues, but a user I kind of had on one of these programs they didn't have access to a lot of the admin functionality and just browsing through all the JavaScript files and following every single one of these leads, I was able to escalate my privileges and get access to endpoints and functionality that I was not supposed to see. And then it led to getting IDORs and some cross-site scriptings and uh, some SQL injections. So this is just the one program. They weren't paying a whole lot, but small vulnerabilities at $250, $400 add up. So I want to say my average bounty on Buckrod was about... Uh, 800 to 900 dollars you know 20 vulnerabilities becomes a lot of money but then when you find some p2s and p1s that number goes a lot higher and on the hacker one end there were a lot of vulnerabilities i found a bunch of cross site scriptings that were very weird and really interesting to find thanks to this legend right here is Nishano. he gave me a good tip and we ended up collaborating together and then i found some other IDOR, some uh, information disclosures. And at the end of it all, I also found an RCE. A big thank you to this legend right here, Alex Chapman, for helping me exploit this, which was an SSR effort that later on turned into an RCE on this production server from this giant retailer. So you kind of understand the two approaches were pretty much the same. Looking at the application, connecting the dots, finding obscure functionality or finding obscure vulnerabilities, for example, the cross-site scriptings. It wasn't just a cross-site scripting payload. There were a lot of hoops that we had to jump through in order to get this cross-site scripting working and showing proof of concept that it actually does affect a large portion of their users. And I want to say that I think my HackerOne average payout was about $2,300 and the highest bounty I got was 12K for the RCE, which was split in a collaboration with uh, Alex Chapman. So you can see that there isn't just me getting a ton of large vulnerabilities. I'm just reporting things as mass and that kind of brings me to my next point. And this next point isn't on the technical side of saying, hey, you gotta learn how these vulnerabilities work but it's just having an attention to small details and also being able to look for patterns of mistake and finding them across multiple applications because you know these developers are the same people that have designed them and these patterns of mistakes are going to happen over and over and over again. And by patterns of mistakes, I don't mean finding the same vulnerability in the same file or parameter. I just mean understanding at the core of it, they're making similar mistakes with encoding particular things or parsing particular things or whatever that means and looking at it across every application that this company has in their scope. So that is kind of what my approach was to this past two months. And I talked about some things that I've learned. And even though the upside was making some money, the downside of it was that I had to give up a lot of my free time. And it was harder to do that because if some of you guys that are following my Instagram or my Twitter, you can see that I was heavily traveling because a lot of my clients had me travel on site to do some stuff for them, whether it was for a pen test, whether it was content. So I was on the road a lot of it. So any time that I got to hack, whether it was at an airport lounge or if it was on the actual plane or between breaks where I had a you know, few minutes to just go on my laptop, I used every bit of those free time to hack. Well, this isn't really healthy because it comes with a lot of burnouts. And if I'm being honest, I haven't really been able to hack anything ever since February was over. I just lost all the motivation because of how much time I spent hacking. So if you want to set up a goal like this, make sure you give yourself enough time. Take some time off. And last but not least, this is something that I struggle with personally. And I know a lot of hackers I've talked about is... I also felt like when I was taking time off, I was taking time away from making money because I was say, having free time that could have equal to finding more bugs and making some more money. So you have to mentally be okay with saying, hey, I've hit my goal, this goal is good enough, and being okay with disconnecting and taking some time off so you don't get burnt out like me and you can go back to hacking and doing more bug bounty hunting and finding some vulnerabilities. Okay, that's it. I think it's a good place to stop the video. Again, if you haven't already, we are on the road to 100K. We are almost at 87K, so if you haven't, hit that subscribe button. Let's get to 87K and drop me a comment. Let me know, are you bug bounty hunting already or was this enough motivation to go after it and try to make some money today? See you in the next video. Peace.